This tutorial is about creating native notifications on mobile systems like Android and iOS. Creating notifications in these systems can be done by two ways. First, using system schedule, where you just set the time when the notification should be displayed. And second, using cloud systems to display notifications remotely. I will focus only on the first method because I think that for programming games it's enough because all we want to display is just notification to player to remind them about our game. At the beginning, we need to install additional package so go to window package manager and search for notifications in unity registry it is also part of mobile package so it can be displayed in the features here mobile notifications go to package view and click install okay so now we are ready to create some notifications let's begin with creating new object on scene let's call it native notifications controller and let's create the script and call it android notifications controller now we need to edit the script so let's open it with your favorite IDE let's remove these functions so we need to create some functions let's start with public void request authorization this is not how this function need to be called this is just my name you can name it whatever you want and in this function we need to ask user for permissions to display notifications starting off android 13.0 developers need to ask users for permission to display notifications so let's start with checking if we already have a permission permission is a part of unity engine.android package so it will need to be imported here permission has user authorized permission and here we need to type android dot permission dot post notification if we don't have this permission because we have notification here we need to ask for this permission so permission dot request user permission and type the same name this is asking for our permission and it's enough now we need to register notification channel and to do that we need to create another function call it whatever you want but i will use register notification channel and here we need to specify a variable of type new android notification channel and we need to set id for something what we want i will call it default channel we need to also specify name importance and description for this channel we can set the importance here. We can choose between default, high, low, and none. But let's start with default. And if you are familiar with Android, you will probably know what this do. But if you're not, it will just add the category of notification to your system settings. And using this, you can specify few channels. For example, you can set channel for ads and channel for gameplay related notifications. And user can disable, for example, this ads channel, but leave gameplay channel uh, with notifications. So this is good to separate some different uh, kinds of notifications. And now we need to call Android Notification Center that register notification channel and send this channel. Okay, so let's finally set a method to send our notification. And now all we need to do is create new Android notification. We can assign it to the variable. And we can set title, text and fire time for this notification. And let's say we want to put this as a params for this function. So we need some strings here. Let's go with string title, string text, and also let's go with int fire time in seconds. We can also set fire time in minutes, hours, or whatever you want, but I will set this to seconds because I want to show you how this will work. And we don't want to wait for minutes or hours. We'll just fire this in seconds. Okay, so let's set notification and let's set title to title and the same with text text and now we need to set fire time so let's set notification fire time to system date time now and this is the current time and we need to add something to this so we can type add and we can choose between days hours milliseconds minutes months seconds and some others we will go to seconds and i will add this fire timing seconds variable here and at the end we need to call android notification center send notification let's send our notification and we need to specify channel id and the same we have earlier so the name of this channel is here default channel 
so let's just copy it and paste here. Okay, this is all for sending notifications. Let's back to Unity and we will create another component which will call these functions uh, when the application starts. So let's call it native notifications controller create this script. I will put it here and edit this script. We can add reference to this type. So let's copy this Android notifications controller and set it as serialized field private and go with Android notifications controller. And now we can call it using star for example. Remember that we need to ask for permissions first. So let's go with Android notification controller and request authorization. After that we need to set channel, so we go to register notification channel and at the end we can finally send notification and we can specify title text and seconds here. Let's call it hello world text will be and we need to set seconds also. Let's set this for three seconds. Okay, and that's all. Okay, one more thing. We need to set reference to Android notifications controller here. Now we can go to file, build settings, and you can connect your device at the moment here. And if you don't have your device, you can use Android Studio emulator, which is provided with Android Studio. You go here for Virtual Device Manager and start your emulator. It's important to use Android with API at least 33, which is Android 13.0 or newer, because requesting permission to notification is provided by this version. In your version, you don't need to ask for permission. Okay, so when our phone is connected or our emulator, we can build and run this application. We need to wait a few seconds and this will automatically start this application and after three seconds you will get a notification you see that dot here and this is our notification hello world from native notifications app so this is how it works on android and now we can get to the ios version because as you may notice we created android notification controller with functions that use unity and unity notification android if you want to use it on ios this will not work this will not even build properly but i will talk about this later now let's create new component in our native notification controller and let's call it iOS notifications controller and let's edit the script. So we need to start with requesting authorization to display permissions and to do that we need to create function that returns the enumerator and we can name it whatever we want but I will call it request authorization. Now inside this function we can type using variable and let's say we will name this Rick like request and create new authorization request and now we need to put authorization options here if you want to display notification pop-up notification notification that is displayed on the notification center uh, we need to put here authorization option that alert and if you also want to display notification dot on the application uh, you need to specify also authorization options that batch you will need to use this character to combine these two options and at the end you can type true or false this is for uh, remote notifications you can set this true but we will not use remote notifications at all so that doesn't matter okay and we need to set loop here while not request is finished we need to yell the return here so we need to yell the return nil. Okay, so this is for requesting authorization. Now we want to send this notification and we don't have uh, to create notification channels here. We just want to create send notification function. And we will also want to put title here and also text here. This will name body, for example. We can also use subtitle here so we can go with it. And we need to specify time, so let's go with seconds also, fire time in seconds. You can also set this for hours, minutes or whatever you want. And now let's begin with creating time trigger. We need a variable called, for example, time trigger and create new object of uh, iOS notification time interval trigger. And we need to specify here time interval, which is new time span and here we can set days, hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds or ticks. Let's go with seconds. So if we want to specify only seconds, we need to type zero for hours, zero for minutes and for second we have fire time in seconds. Repeat you can set this to false because we don't want to repeat the notification. This is up to you. Now let's create notification variable of type iOS notification 
there are some other options. Identifier. We need to set ID for this or we can abandon this and this will be created automatically. But let's say this will be hello world notification. If you want to create more notifications, you can leave this empty to generate this automatically or you can push this identifier by param of send notification functions. Title set to title, the same with body and the same with subtitle. Now show in foreground option, we can set this to true to display this notification and not only in the background but also on the foreground. And we can specify foreground presentation option to alert and sound. This will emit also sound when this uh, notification will, will be displayed. So now we need to set category identifier and also if you have more categories you can specify uh, different identifiers to category. You can also put this in params of send notification function. But let's say we will just name it default category. Thread identifier with one is okay and uh, let's set this to default and trigger we need to set to time trigger we created before we need to call ios notification center and shadow notification to notification okay that's all so let's back to native notification controller because we need to set reference here also private iOS notification controller, name it the same way. And here we have a little problem because we have Android notification controller here. And when we create the mobile app, we can also create it to Android and iOS. And if we want to combine these two systems, we need to specify which notification controller should be called. But let's start with just iOS notification controller and request authorization. This is coroutine, so we need to use it with start coroutine. And then we need to set send notification. Let's call it hello world. And we can specify body, body. We can also type subtitle. And we need to set time. And uh, let's set this to three seconds also. Okay. And now we need to use some preprocessor directives, which will be used to determine which part of this start function should be called. We need to type hash if you need the Android here and we need to end this in this place with elif unity ios and we can set end if here now we see that if unity is set to android target this part of code will be grayed out but if we switch platform to ios this will change this will be grayed out and this will be used and one more thing is that we use notifications ios and notifications android here and if we want to compile it now you will see that this will fail. Okay, so we have our consoles here and as we can see, the type or namespace name iOS doesn't exist in the namespace Unity notifications. This is because we building for Android, not for iOS. So to fix this problem, we can go to iOS notification and we need to set entire content of iOS notifications controller class with if Unity iOS preprocessor. We need to end this here. And now this function doesn't exist. Uh, we need to do the same with Unity of notification iOS using here. Okay, so this will fix the problem. This function exists only in Unity iOS, but I assume that you know how to preprocess or work. If not, just check some tutorials on the internet because I don't want to talk about this in this video. Okay, so we need to set also preprocessor here for Unity Android and we will end this with end if and the same thing for using here and now we won't have problems anymore. So let's back to Unity. Mm, we need to set reference here also. And now we can save the scene. Let's go with build settings. And now if you will build for Android, you won't get any errors. As you can see, build is completed with a result succeed. So let's change this platform to iOS. And now we can choose build and run. And we need to wait a few seconds to complete. Okay, so when application is run on our iOS device, we will get a request to sending 
getting notifications and we need to allow this and we can close the application and as you can see we have hello world notification with subtitle and body displayed here i don't get a pop-up because i have don't disturb mode enabled but as you can see this work if we click on this notification this will move us to this application okay and that's all when it comes to sending simple notifications there are also some other triggers and callbacks and icons you can set all information is on the page of unity mobile notification package you can choose section you are interested the most android ios or some other settings i will not tell about all this stuff in this video because I want to keep it simple and uh, not as long. Okay, so this is all for today. I hope this tutorial will help you a little. I created it because I'm creating a space shooter mobile game. You can check this game on the devlog series on my channel. Because I have to implement notification in my game, I decided to create tutorial also. And here it is. Okay, so if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to not miss more game related content and see you soon. Bye.